In a previous video, I busted several common myths concerning draw shot technique. Visit the link in the video description if you want to see the debunking. In a recent myth busting video, I clearly showed that tip contact time is very small, but varies slightly with tip hardness and shot speed. I also pointed out that the player has no control over the outcome of the shot during the incredibly brief tip contact. But some people questioned the results and wondered if things would be different with other stroke types. In a follow-up video, I solidly debunked the myth that stroke timing and cue acceleration during contact affect the action of the shot. They don't. But some people question this also, claiming it isn't the case for draw shots. To settle things once and for all, Pubo Huang and I did a careful super slow motion video study to measure draw shot effects. For a given tip position and cue speed at contact, do you think it matters what type of stroke was used to get to that point? And do you think the grip hand and cue acceleration during tip contact have any effect on the shot? You might think this based on how different shots might feel, but as we will see, all that matters is the cue speed and tip contact point at impact. The only way to get good draw over distance is to hit the cue ball low with fast cue speed. With the exact same low tip position, if the speed is too slow, all backspin wears off on the way to the object ball. And if the tip position isn't low enough, not enough backspin is imparted. Here, even at fast speed, the limited backspin wears off, resulting in a stop shot instead of draw. This excerpt from my cue ball control video clearly shows the effects of tip height, cue speed, and shot distance on draw shots. To hit a stop shot at distance, you must hit the cue ball below center. The backspin wears off on the way to the object ball. Even with a very low tip position, if you hit the shot too slowly, the backspin will wear off and the cue ball will develop full roll, resulting in a follow shot. The only way to get draw is to hit the cue ball low with enough speed to retain backspin on the way to the object ball. When the cue ball is closer, you don't need to use as much speed to retain backspin and get draw. Even though we will show that cue acceleration at contact has no direct effect on the action of the cue ball for a given cue speed and tip contact point, it is still very important to have good stroke fundamentals. Good stroke timing with smooth acceleration during the forward stroke into the ball is very important for cue speed and cue tip contact point accuracy and consistency. As always, see the links in the description below for related information, demonstrations, and advice. The Draw Shot Technique Advice page might be especially helpful for people wanting to improve their draw shot effectiveness and control. Here's Pubo with the shot featured in the study. He hit many straight draw shots with different tip offsets and cue speeds, and with different stroke styles to vary the cue acceleration at impact. A laser level was used to accurately mark cue ball and object ball positions for a consistent straight shot. And a pocket reducer was used to limit pocket cheating to demand a straight shot. Here's an example shot with a medium amount of draw. Pubo recorded every shot with a Kronos 2.1 high-speed video camera running at 19,783 frames per second, which is why the bright light is required. Here's the recorded super slow motion footage for this shot. Pubo wrote tracking software to measure the stroke motion. The blue triangle on the ferrule is tracked during the shot. For every shot, Pubo got lots of accurate data for the motion of the cue, as shown by this small sample. From this data, the position of the cue versus time was plotted with a polynomial curve fit to allow for accurate speed and acceleration calculations and plots. The contact time was determined by counting frames in the slow motion video. Due to lighting and view limitations, the tip appears to touch the ball slightly before it actually does, so to be consistent with all measurements, Pubo waited for two frames after the gap visibly closes to begin counting. He also stopped counting two frames before the gap visibly opens at the end of tip contact, again to be consistent and more accurate with all measurements. This particular shot had a tip contact time of 24 frames, which corresponds to 0.00121 seconds, or 1.21 milliseconds. 
The tip stays in contact with the cue ball only for about a thousandth of a second for most pull shots. A Jim Rempe training ball was carefully oriented for each shot so the numbered circles could be used to measure the tip contact height. To make things easier and consistent, Pubo estimated where the top edge of the shaft was relative to the circles. For this shot, it was close to 1.3. Here's a summary of the recorded data for all the shots. The shots highlighted in blue and yellow will be shown and discussed in detail later. Plotting data from the results provides interesting insights and conclusions. Here's how tip contact time varied with cue acceleration at impact. All contact times were very close to a thousandth of a second, but cue acceleration during contact does extend the contact time slightly, as shown by the dotted upward trend line. But as we will see later, this is not an important effect. Here's how contact time varied with cue speed at impact. There is a downward trend here. The Q-tip stays in contact with the cue ball less time with faster speed shots. Now let's take a closer look at the effect of cue acceleration during tip contact. Shots 8 and 22, highlighted in yellow, are a good choice for a comparison. They both have very similar tip heights and cue speeds at impact, but shot 8 has deceleration at impact and 22 has acceleration at impact. Remember, with more acceleration, the tip contact time is slightly longer, and with deceleration, it is slightly shorter. Many people think this should change the outcome of the shot, but this is not the case. Here are the two slow motion clips showing the hits. It is very difficult to distinguish one from the other visually. But the real test is seeing the results of the shots. The shots are indistinguishable. Overlaying the two videos, it is totally clear that they have the exact same draw action, although the aim is slightly different. Again, whether the cue has acceleration or deceleration during tip contact has no effect on the shot. The cue's momentum does all the work during contact. Even if you were to let the cue go immediately before impact, resulting in zero acceleration, the outcome of the shot would still be the same. Unfortunately, it is difficult to demonstrate this, but the results here clearly demonstrate that acceleration, positive or negative, has no effect on the outcome of a shot. Again, the cue does all the work during tip contact. Acceleration changes the tip contact time very slightly, but the momentum transfer to the cue ball is still the same. For more information, see the tip contact time link in the video description. Now let's look at a shot comparison dealing with cue speed differences. Shots 14 and 10, highlighted in blue, are a good choice for the comparison. They have similar tip heights, and the cue speeds are very different. The acceleration is positive for both, but as we just saw, these values are unimportant anyway. Here are the two slow motion videos. You can clearly see the difference in cue speed. Obviously, with less cue speed, less speed and spin will be imparted to the cue ball. And with less cue ball speed, more backspin will wear off on the way to the object ball, resulting in less draw. Here are the shots in real time. Again, less cue speed obviously results in less draw action. It is interesting that at faster cue speed, the tip contact time is less than with slower speed. So to get more draw, the tip is in contact with the cue ball less time than for a shot with less draw. Some people wrongly think that the Q-tip needs to be in contact with the cue ball longer to impart more spin. This is simply false. I hope this myth-busting video has helped firmly debunk some common misconceptions concerning acceleration and impact and tip contact time effects. For a given cue speed and tip contact point at impact, the type or style or timing or acceleration of the stroke has no direct effect on the outcome of a shot and more tip contact time is not required to impart more spin. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.